January 1964, Gemini moved steadily toward its primary goal of a flight of a two-man spacecraft. The major objectives of this flight were to prove the compatibility of the launch vehicle and spacecraft, to qualify the launch vehicle systems in flight, and to evaluate the launch complex. A spacecraft in launch configuration weighs about 7,000 pounds. The weight will vary considerably according to the experiments to be conducted on board and other requirements. The spacecraft is approximately 19 feet long and 10 feet in diameter where it mates with a launch vehicle. The Gemini launch vehicle is a modified Titan II procured by NASA through the Air Force. It is man-rated to ensure the safety of the crews. Important among the modifications made to the GLV for manned flight is the addition of a backup flight control system. Both stage one and stage two are controlled in flight by gimballing the thrust chambers of the aerojet engines. If the primary flight control system malfunctions, switchover is made to the spacecraft's inertial guidance system and to the backup autopilot. A malfunction detection system, here being monitored by test consoles, has also been added to underlying safety. The MDS monitors the performance of all subsystems of the launch vehicle and displays a warning of abnormal conditions on the crew console. On January 21st, the sequenced compatibility firing of Gemini launch vehicle number one took place at Cape Kennedy. The vehicle's two stages were mounted in a side-by-side -side configuration and were fired in series, each for a duration of 30 seconds. The vehicle's successful performance signaled its readiness for the launch of the first Gemini spacecraft. On March 5th, spacecraft number one was hoisted in the gantry on launch complex 19. The unmanned spacecraft was to be inserted into a low Earth orbit and would not be recovered. In the gantry white room, pre-mating inspections and preparations were undertaken. The spacecraft was then lowered to Gemini launch vehicle number one, and the two were joined. On the 7th of April, Gemini began counting down for the first step. Gemini 1, unmanned, was being fueled for orbital flight. It would not be recovered. Checkout proceeded into April 8th. Watched closely would be the performance of the Gemini launch vehicle in the early stages of ascent. It incorporated design changes to correct the longitudinal oscillations encountered in early flights of Titan II. Two. There were no major holes in the countdown. Within one second of the scheduled time, Gemini number one lifted smoothly off the pad. It rose high above Cape Kennedy, following the programmed flight trajectory for orbit. Five minutes and 37 seconds later, spacecraft and stage two of the launch vehicle entered orbit as planned. All purposes of the flight were attained. Launch vehicle oscillation was lower than predicted and well within limits for manned flight. GT-1 had now become the 133rd successful major launch of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Plus one, plus two, plus three. Lift off, lift off. Plus arch. Arch on. Plus three. We have proceeded at MCC. We have lift off at one six zero 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 one. We have a blown fuse on the sequence. It's more likely due to the uh, function from the other at this time. Well, I see data looks good. Flight starting. 
Sparks off. Out of sight out of periscope. Attention all personnel. Nice Bird five. looks good. Open okay, roll program is in. We'll go. Looking good from 16. Attention all personnel. All functions on board are go. Bus 50. Go on IP data. Looks good. Bus 60. Rain is 60. Observer. Go ahead. It looks like we've ruptured a line, oxidizer line on stage seven. The cylinder drain line on stage two is ruptured, and we have a red cloud coming out at this time. Roger. Coming up on one minute and 20 seconds. CC, flight stand damage is normal from the periscope at this time. Roger. Go on IP data, looks good. All airborne systems are go. Guidance and booster go. PC, we are still venting oxidizer on stage two. Roger. Propulsion, TC. Propulsion, go ahead. Five minutes, secondary gain, change in, we still go. Close. Roger, TC, they are closed, that is residual. 70,000 feet, two minutes. Visual observer, TC. Go ahead. Do you see anything below decks? Still going on our platforms. Uh, TC is mechanical. Do you want the ramp blowers off? Negative, not yet. Just with your blowers direct, still good. Uh, TC, visual observer, below decks looks normal at this time. Staging on. Uh, we have stopped venting, stage two. Two minutes, 30 seconds, mark. TC, propulsion. Go ahead. That was a uh, uh, oxidizer vent line. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Two, three, Roger. seven. We, all airborne systems are go. We have staging. Stage two is running good. Coming up on three minutes. Mark. TC visual observer. Go ahead. I'll be going off the net at this time for pad inspection. Roger. The bird's on fire. Guidance looks good. Booster Fido, guidance still green. We're still on the line and steering normally. All Fido forces look good. Acquisition at 3 minutes 47 seconds. Bermuda has acquisition at 42. Guys, there's a little let over last two, but go. MCC, we're still go. No radar track from Bermuda yet, CTC. Roger. The bird's still running good. We're estimating Seco in approximately 25 seconds. Stand by for point eight mark. Sources 
seconds to go. Roger. CTC, uh, proceeded. We launched one second too late. Pretty close. 